Watch your Watch Tommy. It's your boy, Keith Allen, the one and only motivation guy to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips that's going to really help you guys become the next greatest Fortnite player. Today, we have an interesting video for you guys, man, especially for all you controller players out there. Fortnite, let me tell you this, it's all about controls. You know, those who have the smoothest controls are able to build quicker, aim better, and achieve better results during a competition. You know, with so many options for controls, many pros really take pride in their ability to use controllers. You know, they've mastered this ability and have even gone as far as to take on mouse and keyboard players. So if you wanna follow the footsteps of some of the best controller players out there, then this is a great place to start. You guys ready for this? Let's get this going. Since PC gaming first became a thing, you know, one of the most popular debates has been the controller versus keyboard argument. It never ends. For a PC gamer, you know, the mouse and keyboard is the pinnacle of controls, you know, with customizability and options that controllers just didn't have at the time. And you really, in a lot of these cases, still don't. However, when it comes to Fortnite, the argument does have a few extra layers to it, which make both options really viable for different reasons. You know, in Fortnite, controller players get the added benefit of, you called it, aim assist. Okay, so what is this exactly? Well, the main purpose of aim assist is to create a balance between keyboard and mouse players and really controller players. So while mouse and keyboard do offer a bit more of a customizability and accuracy, the controller's thumbstick normally wouldn't be as good for aiming. Therefore, to level the playing field, uh, uh, aim assist was born and so while this feature has proven somewhat controversial it's just something that doesn't really seem to be going away anytime soon essentially it does create a choice for players who might want to take advantage of over better aim over customizability or vice versa so ultimately it is up to the player to really make the choice and from what we've seen controllers have worked out perfectly for players such as you know miro and epic well do you feel like you're missing way more of your shots than you should be it sounds like you need aim labs okay so this free to use program is going to help you improve your aim no matter what game you play and will even give you detailed feedback to track your progress and identify the areas that you need to improve the most all right so click the link down in the description right now to improve for free so like a keyboard your settings are going to be what gives you you know what that speed that flow that extra kick that it really allows you to dominate on whatever you're playing on so if you want to be a great controller player you need to find the right ones you feel really the most comfortable with so how exactly do you do that? If you're new to controllers or new to settings in general, it can seem quite confusing at first, you know, figuring out what makes for a balanced change. Of course, you know, you have lower sensitivities, right? After all, that helps you look around faster. However, this is slightly different than the ADS sensitivity, which affects the speed of your aiming. Not to mention, you have to take into account your horizontal and vertical speeds, which can have separate bars if you go with advanced settings. Once again, if you've never really tried altering your settings in any game before this, uh, it probably sounds confusing, but don't worry. Even without experience, there are some well-known options that you can try. All right, so the easiest trick in the book has always been to copy other pro players. I'll say this all the time. You know, this time, all right, you want to specifically focus on pros who use controllers as well. So definitely take the time to really look up some of their gameplay. You know, what settings do they use and what about their play styles do you find the most helpful? After all, it's better to try a proven method than experimenting with settings when you, know, you don't really know what each individual bar does. Pros use the settings they use because it really helps them achieve the level of skill, right? And so this isn't just a shot in the dark, but something that they prove time and time again that it works. So really, it's really just about getting accustomed to the new speeds and practicing every day until it feels natural. So like a keyboard and mouse, controllers offer a variety of different options. Perhaps you play with the standard Xbox or PS4 controller. That's usually the first option you have if you play on console. However, if you want to play with a controller on PC, you have a choice in the matter. So the PS4 and the Xbox controller have different positions for the thumbsticks. If you like to play double claw, then you might want to use a PS4 controller, though the usual recommendation is right claw. More on that later though. You also need to take into account the size of your hands. The PS4 controller is great for smaller hands due to its slim design. However, there are other options out there such as a scuff controller, which really give you a few more customization options such as paddles. In fact, like if you have a controller that does not offer paddles, you can always buy them separately. Otherwise, the more expensive option is to really buy a pro controller or scuff, which is designed to help you make the most out of your binds. Uh, but you know, if money isn't available, don't worry because you know there is actually a method to playing on a controller which gives you more flexibility and really best of all it's free okay so one play style many of the popular fortnite pros such as face sway use as playing claw all right so you might have heard this term used before but you might not know what it really means 
Playing claw simply is a matter of holding your control in a certain way. In the claw form, your hand takes the form of a claw. Here, like you want to minimize using your thumb for buttons and instead use your index finger to manage the buttons. If mastered correctly, you should have an improved reaction time during competitions. Of course, you know, two hands mean uh, different ways of playing claw. Primarily, most controller players who use claw would do so on the right hand since the control functions such as reloading and swapping out weapons uh, is easier to do. Um, but, you know, some players do double claw, which means they use the same hand positions on both the left and the right hand. Claw can be difficult if you're accustomed to using your thumbs for more than just the thumbstick. However, just give it time. Uh, practice doing this by just grinding creative and arena and you might see your skill just slightly decrease during the transition. But... You know, I'm telling you right now, it's just muscle memory and you will adapt. So don't be discouraged by the dip. Eventually, you're going to get used to it and you're going to come out a much quicker player. It's all worth it. Remember, the goal is really just to get the most out of your controller. All right, so one tip that goes hand in hand with playing claw is never taking your thumb off the stick. In Fortnite, you need optimal movement and split second reaction. Like when you're not using the thumb stick, it can be easy to just move it away for a bit and just use it on another button. The good thing about mouse users is that you don't use your thumb to move. Instead, you move your entire hand to look around, leaving your other fingers free to do other motions. So to keep up with that, like you need to train yourself to always have that thumb where it needs to be. So if you're going to follow the previous tip and you want to learn to play a claw you first need to master the use of your thumb but you know there is an alternative if claw is not right for you all right so let's just say for example you can't afford paddles and claw makes your hand feel uncomfortable i get it then what you want to do is really keep your thumb on the building and editing button at all times in this case you're prioritizing builds over aims and you still have that slight second delay between both functions but you know you'll be able to jump right into building much quicker which can save your life if you happen to come under fire and so if you really think about it aiming is good but if you're on the move man uh, you're most likely gonna want to be facing in one direction and if you spot an enemy in the distance then you can take the time to aim properly at them if they haven't really spotted you yet however if they do spot you and start firing at you it's just better to be able to set up defense as quickly as possible rather than looking around you and just trying to catch a glimpse at them. You can always do this from the safety of a box or a wall. These are the kind of tips that you want to learn at Pro Guys, I'm telling you right now, and they can really just walk you through in our coaching program. All right, so binds are another way to really help you become a controller king. Essentially, it really follows the same principles as keyboard bindings, but this time on your controller. You want to be able to hit those important functions as quickly as possible. Like we mentioned before, adding paddles can increase your mobility. And for this section, we are going to be working with you as if we're using paddles. Yeah, okay, so there are many different combinations for binds, like settings, uh, you know, it really all depends on the player preference. However, if you need somewhere to start, consider using your paddles for your basic needs such as jumping and pickaxes, building and editing. And this will not only ensure that you once again keep your thumbs on the paddle at all times, but your basic functions are only a movement away. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. You also need to know which side to apply those binds to. Preferably, you should keep your pickaxe in your right paddles and your building bind your, on your left paddles. Why is that? Good question. Because pickaxe during combat and you know peacekeeping will really require you to really bring down walls and place your own. So you want the quickest reaction time, otherwise your opponent will simply be able to just reclaim it for themselves. It also helps because rather than one hand performing two separate functions, you can start adjusting to each hand having a different task. This makes it easier to remember that left is for builds, right is for pickaxe. A bunch of course, Army, that's gonna wrap up things for today's video. Once again, this is your motivation guy, Keith Allen. I believe in you guys. Uh, you know, whatever you're facing in your life, just be encouraged. It, it only, it's sometimes it feels like you're in a situation forever, but you know, once you get out of it, you look back and you say, you know what? There's, there's gold that you can take away from stuff. You know, there's things that you could take away from your life, the challenges that come against you. I know it feels like the end of the world, but you know, when you get through it, you mature from it, you know, it builds your character. You're, you're just a better person. And so um, I apologize for the things that you've experienced, any negative thing that, that you've been through in your life, but also want to encourage you, you know, to really take the good out of it. You know, just learn to take the good out of every difficult challenge scenario that comes into your life. I'm telling you, just it's going to make you become a better person. Hey, love you guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and uh, follow me on my Instagram at Your Motivation Guy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.